who am I? But a dimmed shadow in the atrium of a chapel in ruins, in the middle of an immense unit. At times the wind whistles, but then it all returns to its stillness. Uncertain hour, gray, at the foot of that cracked facade, in which my soliloquy is denser and more febrile. And even stranger is my figure. Bird, blackbird that immobile speaks and reflects. Tippet of cloth and silk upon the shoulders, so outworn, and, nevertheless, splendid. Hat of frayed plumage, and doublet shirt of canvas and laces. Adorned swordbolt. All in rags and so absurd. How those who saw me for the first time were not going to be amazed. How they weren't going to think of a dancer who was lost on the plateau. They said, in the language of their communities. Who would it be? What dance would his clothes be? Where would he have danced? And those who came across me asked. What's your name? What is your town? And as I was silent, and they noticed the strange glow of my pupils, and my abstraction, my melancholy, they ended up considering that I had lost my mind and my memory, perhaps because of the frenzy of the dance itself in which I had participated. And they commented. Poor man, he doesn't remember his father, nor his mother anymore, nor the land where he came into the world, and maybe nobody is looking for him. The old women crossed themselves when they saw me, and the girls lamented. Young and beautiful he is, and so sad. And so because of this supposed insanity, my appearance, and my seriousness, the sense of strangeness that my presence provoked increased, a sensation so pronounced that by force it excluded all possibility of mockery. There were even herders who, moved by a magical respect, put small bags of coca within my reach as an offering. And since no one ever heard me speak, nor ever articulate a monosyllable, it was concluded that I had also lost the use of the word. Understandable thought, since I turn only to myself in a speech that does not translate even in the slightest movement of my lips. Only to me, in a silent creep since a stubborn internal resistance prevents me from any form of communication with others, and, with more reason, any dialogue. And that's better, no doubt. Nonetheless, that image of alienated and mute outsider, which spread very quickly, resulted in the benefit of my freedom, since there hasn't been any governor or Vareoc to stop me from wandering around as I do. They shared rather that mixture of surprise, fear and compassion that their countrymen experienced in front of me. Furthermore, ancestral beliefs influenced many of them, because of which my madness acquired an almost supernatural dignity. My dementia. It has not bothered me, at any time, the rumor that was affirmed about it. But occasionally I was beset by doubt. But what if that was true? If I really was once a dancer and forgot everything. If I ever had a name, a house, a family. Restless, I approached to the springs and watched myself. My face is so sallow, and always veiled by a funeral halo. Always identical to himself, in his harshness, in his hermeticism. I looked at me, and I was sure that I had never raved, and that I had never been a dancer. Purely intuitive certainty, but no less vigorous. But then, if my spirit never raved, how to understand the taciturn current that absorbs me? How to explain my attire and the obstinacy with which I cling to him? Why this vague unease for of the lake? No, I could not answer those questions, and it was also futile to find a justification for such white hands and a talk that is not about misty or peasant. And even more useless to try to answer the fundamental question. Who am I, then? It was as if at an indeterminable point in the past I had come out of nowhere, dressed already as I am, and talking to myself, distressing myself. Already wandering and oblivious to youth, love, childhood. Locked up in myself and without remembering a beginning or seeing an end. I went, then, on the roads and the moors, without sleeping for a moment or stopping for more than a day. Always absorbed in my quiet monologue, even if I approached to help an old man under the rain, a woman with her little ones, a dying pongo in a desolated terrain. 
I went to the towns at a party, and listened with fearful hope to the music of the Quinas and the Sicuris, and looked one after the other the gangs, especially those that came from far away, from Capacabana, from Aruro, from Zapita, from Combapata. I was touched by their interpretations, but I never recognized a melody or found an attire that resembled mine. Months and years went by, and everything would have continued that way if chance, chance, really, hadn't taken me, after that aimless walk, to the Rorak Tambo. There was no one but an old man who was resting, and looked at me carefully. He said suddenly, in a Quechua, that seemed very ancient to me. Eres el bailante sin memoria. Eres Ed y hace mucho tiempo que caminas. Anda a la capilla de la Santa Cruz en la pampa de Ocongate. Anda y mira. I took note of his advice and his insistence, and the next morning, very early, I started my way. And so, after three days, I arrived at this abandoned sanctuary, of which barely the facade and the pillars remain. I went up to the atrium, and soon my eyes fell on the frias, under those attached arches. And there, on the broken slab once by lightning, are four figures in relief. Four dancing figures. They wear tippet, doublet, feather hat, sword bolt. Images not of saints, but of angels, like those that appear in the paintings of Pomada and Cusco. They are four, but the last one got stricken by the sparkle, and only its silhouette, and, printed, some lines of the wings and the plumage remain. Four angels on a flowering of leaves, fruits and stone arabesques. What dance do they dance? What music do they follow? It's an act of celebration and joy. I contemplate them in the glacial and terrible silence of this place, and stop at the empty silhouette of the absent. I close my eyes. Yes, only a shadow I am, dim shadow. And bird, blackbird without memory, who will never know the reason for his fall. In silence, always, an endless solitude, twilight, exile, 